Welcome to this video on combination reactions, observations and equations. In our last video we had a look over what combination reactions are, how they happen and how we would go about describing methods of combination reactions. So to start this video off we're going to have a quick recap of those three things. We're then going to move on and have a look at observations we would make during combination reactions and then we'll be able to move on to how we would go about solving equations of combination reactions. So let's first focus on a quick recap. So a combination reaction is a reaction where you take two separate substances, combine them together to create a brand new substance. So for example we take two elements, add them together to form a new compound. Combination reactions occur spontaneously or they are driven by external factors such as heat or light energy. And when we describe a method of combination reactions we're focusing on three things. What the substrates are, how the reaction happens and what the products are that are formed. So for a combination reaction it is the combination of two elements to create a new compound. So now that we have a good basic foundation of combination reactions, we can have a look at the observations we would make during these reactions. When we're going over observations of combination reactions, it's really good to keep in mind these three things. How you would describe the substrates, so how you describe what you start with. How you describe the reaction itself, so what the reaction looks like. And how you describe the products that are formed, so what you end up with at the end of the reaction. So to have a better grasp on this, we'll work through an example of the production of magnesium oxide. So first we need to describe the substrates, which is going to be magnesium and oxygen. So magnesium is a silverish coloured metal, and it usually comes in the form of a ribbon. And oxygen is a colourless gas. We can then think about how you describe the reaction itself. So to combine magnesium and oxygen, we need to burn the magnesium ribbon for the magnesium to be able to react with the oxygen in the air. When we burn the magnesium, it burns with a really bright white flame. We then need to describe the product, so it's magnesium oxide. So when all the magnesium ribbon is burned, you're left with this powdery white solid, and that's magnesium oxide. And that's how you would describe the observations of the reaction through. So describe the substrates, describe what the reaction itself looks like, and describe the products that are formed. And there are three really common combination reactions that come up in the level 1 chemistry exams. The three reactions are magnesium and oxygen producing magnesium oxide, iron and sulphur producing iron sulphide, and copper and oxygen producing copper oxide. And it would be really good if you could get a good grasp on what all three of these reactions look like. So we've already gone through and used magnesium oxide as an example. So we can quickly have a look at what the formation of iron sulphide and copper oxide look like. So firstly, iron sulphide is the combination of iron and sulphur. So these are usually in powder form. So iron powder is this dark grey powder and sulphur comes in this bright yellow powder. The reaction of the combination of these two elements, when you add heat they brightly glow like you can see in this picture here and they form iron sulphide, which is this dark grey solid that forms. Now if we have a look at copper and oxygen, so copper is this pinky metallic metal, and oxygen is a colourless gas. To combine a copper and oxygen, we burn a piece of copper in a Bunsen burner, and this forms copper oxide, which is this dark powdery film that forms on the copper metal. So it's really good to get a good grasp on these three really common combination reactions and the observations you make during their reactions. So now we know what our combination reactions are going to look like, you are also often asked in exams to write equations for their reactions. So when we go about writing equations for combination reactions, there are three steps we need to focus on. We need to know how to write the word equation, we need to know the symbol equation, and we need to know how to balance the equation. Before you can write the word equation, it's really good to have a good idea of the common suffixes of the compound. So that's the second word of the compound. And these are important not just for combination reactions, but for other reactions too. So when you're mixing something with oxygen, it's going to end in oxide. If you're going to mix something with sulfur, sulfide, and so on and so forth. Now this table is available in the resource booklet you are given 
during your exams. So if you can't remember it all, you can refer to that resource booklet. But it's a really good idea to have most of these in your mind. And if you're not too sure, then you know you can refer to that resource booklet. So to be able to explain through equations for combination reactions, we're going to have a look at an example of the production of magnesium oxide. So that's magnesium plus oxygen produces magnesium oxide. So first focus on your word equation, which is pretty much what I just said. Magnesium plus oxygen produces magnesium oxide. You then need to think about your symbol equation. So magnesium symbol is Mg and oxygen symbol is O. And oxygen as a gas comes in the form of a molecule of two oxygen atoms. And magnesium oxide is going to be MgO. So that's a compound made up of one magnesium atom and one oxygen atom. And we now need to balance this equation so that we have the same amount of atoms of each element on both sides of the equation. On the left hand side, which is our reactant side, and on the right hand side of the equation, which is the product side. On our reactant side here, we have one magnesium atom and two oxygen atoms. And on our product side, we have one magnesium atom, so the same as the reactants, but we only have one oxygen atom. So overall, we're missing an oxygen atom. This is not balanced. So an easy way we'll be able to balance this is just halving the number of oxygen atoms we have here. So we have half an oxygen molecule. And then this would cause the equation to be balanced. So we'd have one magnesium atom on the reactant side, half of the oxygen molecule. So we'd have one oxygen atom on the reactant side. And then we'd also have one magnesium and one oxygen atom each on the product side. However, in chemistry, we really don't like to have half numbers. We like to work with whole numbers. Since our equation is already balanced now, what we can do is similar to algebra, where we can times everything on one side of the equation by the same number that we times everything on the other side of the equation, and it will make it all balanced still. So to make this a whole number, we can times it by 2, make it a 1, and we'll times this by 2 as well. So we're going to multiply the whole reactant side of the equation by 2. We're also going to do exactly the same thing to our product side. This is going to give us 2 magnesium and 1 oxygen molecule, but in chemistry we don't add in the 1, so we just leave it blank, and 2 magnesium oxide molecules. And this is going to give us a completely balanced equation. 2 magnesium atoms on the reactant side, 2 oxygen atoms on the reactant side, 2 magnesium atoms on the product side, and 2 oxygen atoms on the product side. So now we're all balanced. So the things we need to remember about our equations of combination reactions is to make sure you know the word equation, to write out the symbol equation, and make sure it's balanced, so that we have the same number of atoms of each element on both sides of the equation. So now that we have a good grasp on combination reactions, we're going to work through a wee question from an exam. So the scenario given is iron and sulfur powders mixed together and heated in a test tube. So they're going to ask us what kind of reaction this is. So we have two elements and we're going to heat them together to make one new compound. So we know that this is a combination reaction. The next part of the question asks us to describe observations that we see during this reaction and link them to the reactants and products. So when we're describing our observations, we're going to describe the substrates. So a dark grey powder of iron is mixed with a yellow powder of sulfur. Then we describe what the reaction looks like. So when they're heated, they glow brightly and describe what the product is that is formed. So the reaction forms a dark gray solid that is iron sulfide. The last part of the question asks us to write a balanced symbol equation. So our equation is going to be iron plus sulfur produces iron sulfide. So iron symbol is Fe and sulfur symbol is S so iron sulfide is going to be FES. And for this question, the equation is already balanced. One iron atom and one sulfur atom on the reactant side of the equation, and one iron atom and one sulfur atom on the product side of the equation. And that brings us to the end of combination reactions. So the key points we need to take away from this video is when describing our observations, we need to describe the substrates, we need to describe the reaction itself and we need to describe the products that are formed. And when we are working through equations of combination reactions, 
we need to know how to write the word equation and we can refer to that table of common suffixes of compounds that is in your resource booklet. You need to be able to write the symbol equation and you need to be able to balance it. And when we are balancing the equations we need the correct formula and when we're balancing our final equation needs to have whole numbers.